Hello YouTube, this is uh, Jonathan Jardina and I am just uh, making a short video about uh, a book that I've been, been blogging about on my website. The uh, book is called uh, Get Good With Money by uh, Tiffany, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure how to pronounce her name, but it's by, uh, she calls herself uh, the, the Budget Nista. It's called Get Good With Money and i um, been blogging about it. Some of the figures I've, I've been having uh, trouble f uh, determining where she got some of her figures. So that's the first blog. The first blog that I, um, which I have, I'll have the links for these in the description. I had trouble finding the figures, and, and in the second blog, I figured out where she got some of her figures. But um, this, I want to just focus on. What she says about whole life insurance and whether she's being fair or not to um, to her comp w when she compares whole life insurance to um, the stock market. Now she says on, on page 246, uh, 249 of her book, she says, um, according to Consumer Reports, the average annual rate of return for whole life guaranteed cash value um is 1.5 percent and she wrote and she wrote um the next sentence says that's it exclamation exclam um, exclam exclamation point so she says 1.5 percent for whole life that's you know and that that does sound that sounds horrible it's not even going to uh keep up with inflation and she says um in comparison in comparison over the last 30 years the stock market has yielded a return of uh seven percent to eight percent okay but what's she okay now in one of my blogs i use uh, officialdata.org to de to determine what the returns on the stock market would be for the last 30 years or for probably or from 1990 to, to 2020 which is which is what i assume uh she's referring to or, or that's when i think that she wrote that part of the book for reasons I won't get into um, so I just put 1990 to 2020 and they actually say that after all uh, after you reinvest all the dividends the return on the stock market for that period is actually 10% so it, she might have even understated her case for the stock market but this is the, but this is the problem the 1.5% figure for whole uh, whole life does not include um the dividends so so even you know i don't i don't know what would if the eight percent figure includes dividends dividends or not i know that her hundred percent uh, her okay i know that when she talks about the last hundred years of the stock market and she says the return has been ten percent i i know that that includes dividends because i could look that up on officialdata.org and the links in the in the blog um I can check that out for myself, and so, but that assumes the dividends. But this, why, but it's not fair for her to. You know, I'm not saying that the whole life is a better deal, because, but but to compare whole life with no dividends reinvested to the stock market with dividends reinvested, is kind of. It look it looks it looks suspicious, especially because the the the, the Consumer Reports article that that I think that she used does mention that the total yield with dividends is 3.5 percent not it's not 1.5 percent it's 3.5 percent and you could say that's low that's too low and that's that's a lot worse than 10 10 percent you know we, that's neither here nor there you got to compare something with something you know you can't you can't you can't go with like the worst case scenario for a, um for a whole life and then compare that with like actual the actual um uh, so, uh, the, the actual events of the stock market is okay, but that's another problem though. She uses she talks about what the stock market had done, you know, last thirty years, last hundred years uh, before she published the book. So her advice to people in in twenty uh twenty twenty one is is to invest, and she's very like very uh insistent upon that she says she says 
get period started period no period excuses like get started no excuses you, you need to invest in the stock market right now because look look how good it's done and she's and she tells you you know yeah you know if you would invest in the stock market from uh 2000, 2015 to 2020 you know to 20 yeah it's 2020 you would have seen this this uh in, in, huge increase in your profit and it, she goes through uh the years and just says like if you have if you had done this you would have had a, a big profit okay i mean that, that that's not a very compelling argument that's like that's like if, imagine if i said oh you know if if you had invested in bitcoin in 2015 80 dollars you'd have twelve thousand dollars today or, or you, you would have twelve thousand dollars before it crashed you know which is true but so what i mean we're not we can't go back in time and invest in bitcoin just like we can't go back in uh, back in time and invest in the stock market in the early 21st century that, that's it's over so what 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 would have happened if you actually followed the budget nista's advice all right on uh the day that her book was published the dow jones industrial average was at thirty three thousand one hundred fifty three okay and you could say oh well well now it's at thirty four thousand so it's 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 higher than you know it, you know it, it went, went down a lot but now today it's it, it's it's higher than than what it was in the day it was it was published so you're finally um you could think you could think oh well you know it finally paid off my investment paid off well no because uh, according to like official figures, CPI, PCE, I forget, you know, one of them was saying that um, in, in 2021, I believe, uh, either 2021 or 2022, no, yeah, it was, I think it was 2021. the the official uh, The official inflation numbers was eight percent or something like that. So you got to adjust for inflation. So thirty four thousand adjusted for inflation. Okay, like or, or or in other words, in in twenty twenty one dollars, thirty that th that thirty four thousand is um. I don't know if you can see it, but the thirty four thousand is thirty thirty one thousand dollars five hundred thirty one thirty one thousand five hundred seventy two dollars. Okay, so that's a lot. Just so in, in comparing it with twenty twenty one dollars, it's the stock market is way down. Like you you lost money in real terms if you followed um get good with money's advice i mean that's not that's not getting good with money that's that's losing money and um and, and not to mention um her her, her comparison with whole life if, if i do if i in fact do did find the actual consumer reports article that she used like her her comparison her her figure on whole life is is just totally totally unfair, and it's like it w it wasn't even it w and not to mention the article's old to begin with. Uh, but but if that, if she used that article, and she just left out the fact that you know that w with dividends reinvested, the, the figure's a lot higher. By or, or or like you know you go up at least two percentage points if, um, if the dividends are reinvested, and she used the the figure with no dividends dividends for whole life the one she's against and used dividends reinvested for the stock market the one she's for if she did that then like that's just looks i mean that looks very you know you know i, I mean you could judge you could judge for yourself but that's that's um that's not uh that she's not doing her, her readers any any uh favors by doing that whether whether it's an honest mistake or not, which I which I if if I have the original article, which is in the the links in the blog, the ar the archive links in the blog, so it's a it's an article that you could you could find even if even if the Consumer Reports website goes down, you can find it in archive.org now, and um, you can see that she just omitted that, admitted omitted uh that the 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 part you know she admitted the part that would uh hurt her case. Or at least, or at least that's what it look like. What it looks like. Um, so yeah, that's that's all I'm gonna say about that. Uh, I'll put the links in the in the description. And uh, yeah, so just I shouldn't have to say this, but um, arg arguments about oh, you know, that 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 
arguments that say, oh, look how much you would have made if you had done this investment in the last five years, you know, so go ahead and do it in the future. That's, I think people know they put disclaimers on these investments and say, you know, past performance is not indic indicative of uh, future results. They put that disclaimer for a reason because because they don't want people to get the wrong impression. But um, there, I don't, as far as I know, as far as I can see, there is no disclaimer in this book, in the front, in the back, or anything. No disclaimer. So. Um, oh no no she does say that in the in the, the the very uh in the copyright page it'll say this material in this book is supplied for informational purposes only it's not meant to be take it's not meant to take the place of professional advice so yeah they're okay there is a there's a disclaimer so so you lose money or the for, or for the people that took your advice and lost money i guess um you know it's on them but anyway i digress all right um yeah, check out check out the links and uh hope I'll be blogging again soon. All right, bye.